Hi and welcome to our session on pulleys. Pulleys are also known as sheave blocks or just blocks. We've got a small selection of pulleys here from our industry. They all look quite different, they have different uses, but they all have some things in common. So let's take a closer look. So the pulley needs a method to attach into the system. So we attach into this connection point which we call a becket. So there's a single becket on this Omni. We've got two beckets on this twin, single becket on the SRT, and this one's got multiple beckets. The other thing they have in common is they all have a sheave. So this one here has a single sheave. On the twin there's two sheaves, so we can run two ropes independently through that pulley. Let's have a look at that sheave in detail. We've got an aluminium alloy sheave that's pressed onto a roller bearing. Now all of these pulleys will have a maximum rope diameter specified. So if we run that rope over there, it should run nice and snug inside that sheave. Another important aspect is the diameter of the sheave. Now, we don't necessarily want to know that diameter, which is the overall diameter. We want to know the diameter of the tread. And the tread is the bottom of the concave section there. Some organisations will specify a minimum tread diameter being four rope diameters. So if you run a half inch rope, they'd specify that the pulley tread diameter has to be at least two inches or 50 millimetres. Another aspect we look at is what that pulley's made out of, or the sheave's made out of. This one's aluminium alloy. In our application, aluminium alloy gives us the best balance between cost, weight and durability. If you wanted a pulley that was lighter weight or lower cost, you might go to a plastic sheave, but you're going to sacrifice durability. If you're looking for durability, you might want to go to a stainless steel sheave or a hardened steel sheave, but that's going to add weight and it's going to be more expensive. So let's have a look at that bearing in more detail. This sheave runs what we call a oilite bushing. So there's a sintered bronze bushing that's been pressed into the sheave there. That's been impregnated with oil so that when it runs on the axle it should run nice and smooth. So that's a very common type of bearing. Another common type of bearing is a roller bearing. So this one's got the aluminium alloy sheave pressed onto the roller bearing. Now that roller bearing is normally filled with grease and normally runs some sort of seal on there, usually a rubber seal on both sides. Keeps the dust out. The advantage of the roller bearing is its high efficiency or low friction. The advantage of the oil light bushing is its low cost. So let's finish off with a few pulley types. This is a swing cheek pulley, which is a very common pulley type. Easy to easy to attach the rope, but you can't attach the rope while the pulley is attached to a system. You need to disconnect the pulley off the system to put the rope on and off. We've also got what we call a fixed cheek pulley, so those cheeks can't move. And to load the rope, we need to push it in between those cheeks. So when that rope's loaded, you'll see there's a separation between those two cheeks. So we need to be careful of what carabiner we use to attach to that. It should be a HMS type bin or an oval carabiner. It shouldn't be an offset D. Next we look at some multiple sheave pulleys. So here's a double or twin and here's a triple. Something to keep in mind when you're running multiple sheaves in this configuration is they should have a fairly balanced load between each sheave because if you've got all the load on one side and not on the others, the pulley will actually twist sideways and you'll wear on the, the rope will wear on the side plate or on the cheek. This pulley has two sheaves but you'll see that the two sheaves are running in series. We often call this a tandem pulley. Next we have a knot passing pulley. This is a Petzl Kootenay. It runs a three inch tread and it's also a very wide tread. So you can either, you can either use it to pass knots or you can also use it to support multiple lines. So you can fit four half inch ropes across there or four 12.5 millimeter ropes across there. Next we have a self jamming pulley. 
Now this is the first pulley I've shown you that we can actually open that plate up, the front plate, while it's still attached to a system and then connect the rope. So with this particular pulley we can engage the cam, so it's a tooth cam inside there. So the rope will run through one direction but it won't run the other way, so it'll jam up inside there. So that's our self-jamming pulley. The more traditional way of getting that same effect is to run what we call a prussic minding pulley. So this prussic minding pulley here, we attach it to the rope, we attach our prussic to the rope and we should get the same effect. So we can pull the rope through one direction and it should jam the other. So that's our prussic minding pulley. So the last pulley I want to finish off with is this one. This one runs at a swivel, so the pulley itself can rotate freely. It also has a lockable front plate or front cover, and that front cover has a safety latch in there. So we can load a rope and unload a rope from this pulley while it stays connected to the system, so there's less chance of dropping it. Now the other thing that this pulley has that most don't is it's got a one-way sheave, so the sheave will rotate in one direction and not back the other. So we can have a rope that pulls freely in one direction but adds friction in the other direction, which could be a, to your advantage if you're in a haul system. You might have the rope running through in this direction on the haul as you raise the load, and if you lower the load, it adds some friction to it coming back the other way. So it's the key thing with this pulley is to not get that switched around the other way. So you don't want to be trying to haul through a pulley that isn't spinning. So in summary you won't just find a sheave inside this sort of configuration. Um, you might find a sheave mounted inside a carabiner. So the revolver runs a tiny little sheave on the end of that. Um, you can also get a plastic sheave that will go over a carabiner, go onto an oval shaped carabiner it will reduce friction as you drag a rope up through it. You're also starting to see sheaves inside devices. So this MPD has a one-way sheave inside it that allows it to run one way without much friction, but it um, holds friction in the other direction. You'll also see sheaves on edge rollers and things like that where we want to reduce friction as a rope comes up over an edge. And in some instances you might be able to get a sheave mounted inside a frame. So this is a high directional frame A-frame head and it's got a sheave inside. So I hope this information has been useful. Thanks for watching.